Hi. After quite a while I'm back again with a video. Sorry I had some uh, other hobby things to do and uh, work and all that stuff that hindered me from uh, concentrating on FreeCAD, especially regarding creating tutorial videos. But uh, here I am again. Let's uh, do a little video again as usual not for those who have uh, 10 years of experience with the FreeCAD, more for those who are still struggling with the basics. It's not a introductory video, it's more for those who have already seen one or more of my videos. And uh, in this case, I want to just show you how I do things when I need something from uh, FreeCAD that uh, I want to print in a 3D printer later on. In this case it's about a holder that uh, holds sort of a bracket that can then hold a device for um, attaching print spools onto a shelf on the on the lowest side of a shelf and it's a sort of a sleeve with uh, a couple of holes to fix that sleeve on the wood of the shelf. Okay, uh, let's just start. Um, and before I do it, the usual which version. I'm still working for these videos. I'm still working with uh, 16.1.1.0, which is uh, the released version of FreeCAD 0.18. Um, some may ask, uh, why didn't he take uh, 0.19? Well, I would say for things for these things that we are talking about, 019 doesn't bring anything real new. 019 is just continuing in uh, a couple of specialties to make it more stable, to make it uh, a little bit easier to handle here and there. But it's not at a point where I would say you have to go to 019 yet. Still needs some time until it's really needed to uh, go to 019. So if you've got 018, you can stay for a while. Okay, good. So next thing, as usual, is the version of mouse movements, which I'm going to use. And that is, again, the gesture mode. Let's go into the workbench, view workbench and as usual I'm working in part design. Create a new project, create your first body and in the body create a sketch and we want to start at the XY plane. Good. Nothing fancy yet, and again nothing fancy, we just create a rectangle, and this rectangle, and this rectangle I want to make in a specific size, and that's the size of the inner part, which, or of the holder part. I will show you, uh, at, at the end I will show you a picture where you can see how the whole thing looks like when it's ready. I have not uh, done it before so I can't show you. Uh, it's really, I've, I'm starting here with my own design. Uh, it's not that I've prepared something, so I can't show you. But I have the other part which goes into the sleeve and that one has a width of 24 millimeters, so selected the wrong double one, 24 millimeters. And the second length, that's the whole length of the part that goes into the sleeve, and that is going to be 40 millimeters. So we've selected that already, 40 millimeters. Good. Next thing is, usually we center our base design to the origin point here. 
remember I've done again the old clicking problem in the video sometimes my mouse is not reacting a hundred percent in speed so first click the opposite points and last click the center point and then click create a symmetry constraint from some people I've once heard that if you're using a Mac this may be opposite but uh, in my case if I do it the way that these guys described it uh, it doesn't work so maybe I don't know good so we have a fully constrained sketch remember a sketch should but doesn't exactly need to be fully constrained but uh, it's always better to have it fully constrained so that all the points and all the geometric constraints are completely defined that makes it more stable good so next thing that we need is we want to create a pad from this and this pad shall have a height of uh, that was yeah 5.1 millimeters so that's not correct that's my old problem I'm in Germany and I need to use a comma instead of a point so there we go now we have a block which is the same as the part that goes into the holder that we're gonna construct so let's name this body in a part and next is we create the next body new body and to start this body so we can exactly construct it around this inner part we need a reference to the inner part somehow there is a couple of possibilities usually I would say let's take a shape binder we do this just to show it we select the part as such from our first body then we click on create a shape binder it select the pad and we click OK. As we have created a shape binder, we can switch our inner part off and what we see is the shape binder that resulted from this block and we can now reference to this object. So that is a version that I've shown a couple of times. I will just create one sketch based on it just uh, for those who have never seen how to work with shape binders. So what we're going to do is we create a new sketch. We base it on the XY plane as the other sketches have been and let us create A rectangle and let this rectangle take some reference to the existing block we now have to use create an edge link to an external geometry the usual external geometry tool we take this one we take this one and to fix the distance there's uh, a lot of cup a lot of possibilities let's take the very simplistic one we let this be four millimeters we let this one be four millimeters and we take this distance oops that was wrong first 
I have to switch to vertical dimensioning and let's take 4 also. We move this out a little bit so it looks better. Good, and finally we want to fix the lower piece and this is again B for millimeters. So there's nothing fancy and we close this and now we have a new block and we want to make this block two millimeters more than the other so we make this seven millimeters and we're gonna have a look at it and to create this look we first want to do a slice and that is a clipping plane and we want to clip this one in Y direction so that we can see the inner block is now not centered it sits on the same plane as the first block so what we can do is we go into the properties of our sketch and here we have the position and we move the Z position or Z position depends on how you speak it <laughs> we move this down one millimeter and voila you can see it's centered now so that was relatively simple for this and we now have a block and the next thing is we want to cut out the block from our new pad so what we do is let us create a new sketch first of gotta go out of this slice view out of the clipping plane so let's create a new sketch and again we want to take nearly the same but now we see oh hmm, we can't see our shape binder and there's two possibilities one is the classic version that I've shown in most of my other videos and that is switch off the pad in many cases still you need to do this but in other cases like case that we're working on in the moment there's a new possibility which you don't see on my screen because you know I'm not doing my videos in a monster format I'm doing that in 1400 by 900 to allow a decent resolution versus performance I'm uh, my screen is a bit limited so I have to show you this one in the sketch menu and that is view section what means view section that means a cut is made into the existing objects at the working plane so if I move this a little bit in 3d space you can see our new block the outer block which was one millimeter more than the original block I'm switching back from view section switching it on again so the upper part which is on the positive Z direction of our existing or our working plane is just virtually cut away as if it wouldn't exist so this allows us if we go to the top side again we can now select our shape binder to get a reference for our corners 
of the new block and we create a rectangle be sure when you want to create a rectangle with automatic constraining you get it on the points switching to yellow and in this case it switches immediately to be fully constrained sometimes it may happen you don't get the point so don't forget to check whether everything still moves if it doesn't switch to fully constrained automatically good so, so let's go back and create a pocket so this pocket goes from our plane just to make it clear I'm switching on the origins and we see this is the plane we're working on and you can see from the working plane it goes towards negative direction so a pocket will always try to cut through the object and for our experiment here we need the pocket to be reversed so it'll point upwards well now it's away no it isn't away if we make it long enough enough it would protrude through so we can go back and keep it at five millimeters and to verify we will again create a clipping view clipping plane so this time we do the view a little bit more complex we click clipping custom direction which is not a cut in one of the standard planes so you select an offset that means how deep is your clipping plane going into your object so let's take it here and if we change the view the clipping plane will also change how it is created if we do this you can click adjust to view direction and then change parameters so you can create a sectional view that fits your needs to make your object visible as you want it so we can see we now have a hollow block good so there's another possibility by the way which in some cases may, may really be easier and that is if you click pocket and you click appearance and transparency which hopefully yeah it does work and you use the transparency then you can also see it but uh, it doesn't show you that the shape binder has really been cutting out something yet so the sectional view is a little bit better so let's leave it at this point with the version that used the shape binder you can imagine how I'm gonna continue in this case but we want to use a different way of bringing parts from one sketch uh, from one body to the other so let's make our body 001 invisible open our first body and make sure the sketch we used is visible so after the sketch is visible on screen you can create a new body which is automatically active and we create a new sketch we're using the XY plane again and now we can see our original sketch if we try external reference that's not going to work because external reference will not go across bodies it'll only 
work inside one body. But there's a possibility to overcome this. And it's a not so widely known, but very powerful function once install, uh, integrated in version 17. And that is the carbon copy functionality. What does that mean? That means if we click to carbon copy, we have a tool that allows us to select lines from other sketches. Unfortunately, this tool seems to be limited inside the sketch also. No, it isn't. Because if we click the STRG or control key, in German it's normally called STRG. In English speaking countries, it's going to be control key, which is uh, leftmost, lowermost on most keyboards. So I'm clicking this and then I'm moving my mouse and now we can see the lines turn yellow and we can click them. And if we click one of the lines from the other sketch, then the whole sketch is copied into our current sketch as geometry. So this means if we now just create a block from that, this would work. But we're not going to do this. We're just going to use this as reference. And if we want to use it as reference, we just select the hole by dragging the mouse with the left key clicked. Then we can switch all of it to be construction geometry, which is then in blue, and won't create a feature. And now, as we've done in our first version, we create a new rectangle. And this time I want to use a different way how to constrain the width of the sides. In this case, I'm going to constrain one of them. I click two of these points. I give them a distance of four millimeters and I name this wall thickness. Why did I name this? Because, and that's some, in many cases, a forgotten feature of uh, FreeCAD. We can now select the next one, click both, and instead of keying in the length here, we key the equal sign and we key a C for constraints. And as we only have one, then it will take this one. There's something gone wrong. I gotta go back to this again. And unfortunately my keyboard created a hashtag sign, which is not valid. So let's do this once again. Equal C for constraints, constraints wall thickness. Okay. And it'll take the four millimeters as defined. So we have both in the horizontal and we need the same twice in vertical. Equal C click OK, OK, and the same here. So equal C thickness, OK, OK. Good. So let's move the wood out of sight so it's uncluttered always a good idea 
it's now fully constrained and we can close and as we did before we can create a pad with our six millimeters no seven millimeters and just create the second sketch sketch xy plane okay as we said before there is a possibility to use the sectional view we still see these lines but now we have a problem now we see these lines and as we have changed them to construction mode in our previous sketch these are the lines really from our other body sketch so let's use this again press the control key and we've got them in again right mouse key select anything and voila again we have our constructed geometry and we can easily start to drag a rectangle from point to point and if we're lucky we will get in the points and it will auto constrain and we click close and again we make this stuff hollow with a 5.1 millimeters high block which again we can't see because it's the wrong direction and we have to reverse it so it goes inside and again it goes inside but not far enough we need to move this a little bit higher one millimeters view clipping plane custom direction to view and we can see even though the view is not very perfect it's inside so now let's continue the next step is I would like to create a slot so I can insert my let's say I can insert the shoe of the holder and uh, I do this by creating a new sketch oops we have to close this one first new sketch XY plane again and again view section again carbon copy with the control key close oops not close sorry view section create a rectangle and this rectangle should be different I want this rectangle to go in here for four millimeters. I want this rectangle to be at the corner. So now we have the problem. We want this sketch to be uh, no not the sketch we want a pad the sketch of the pad as the reference if we now try to click this with the view 
that we have with this view section, you can't be a hundred percent sure whether you click the sketch or whether you click an edge from this pocket. So this is the reason why you should switch off that pocket and be sure you click the sketch as your reference. Because you know if you use edges that belong to features once the sketch of the feature changes by adding lines, deleting lines, re-adding lines or something like that, the naming, the internal naming of that edge can change and then you're lost. It can change as well if you change it in the sketch. That's okay. But then you will only lose the reference and you can easily re-reference the one and the nice part of that is you don't lose the reference to where the sketch is located at. So if you use a feature, your sketch may be flipped around in the 3D dimensions and you're getting totally lost and it's not so easy to re-reference this sketch to a different plane. It's easier to remove all the external constraints or the external references and just re-reference them. That's uh, just a few mouse clicks. So it's a bit easier to do this. Therefore, be sure you reference sketches instead of features. Good. So let us now move this one onto that line and we want to make this difference the same as we had it before. So let's create the equal sign. We need the name where the constraint was defined and that was sketch 003. and constraints and there we got the wall thickness and what we can do is we double click I create a new naming because now which doesn't make too much sense with uh, two constraints only but it may make sense if you have a lot more constraints now we can make equal sign and just constraints thickness and so we have an um, indirect referenced constraint here. Good. So that's what we need for this sketch. It is fully constrained and we close it and we want to create a new pocket and this pocket now should point upwards to leave the one millimeter there. We make it reversed and we move the sketch up. one millimeter again. You can see this looks strange and that's not as we have expected. What went wrong? Well I made a mistake and the mistake is pretty easy and that is when I go back into sketch 005 I can now see there's not only the two lines of my pocket being constrained there's more constraint and that's something we don't need and that is because I have forgotten to make these elements which I copied from the previous sketch using carbon copy to make them construction geometry 
and now as I change them to construction geometry what's left over is the real rectangle and now we can see that rectangle opens our sleeve and all we have to do is make it one more millimeters in length and we have this open sleeve now. So by principle that would be all I need for this object to make this object able to screw it onto um, the lower face of my shelf I need a couple of mounting holes <clears throat> and uh, this distance here is a little bit too small for the mounting holes and as I wanted to show you the positive things of uh, this parametric design in FreeCAD I wanted to show you how easy you can now change values here so uh, what we're doing is we want to make this a little bit wider so we go into our sketch 001 where we have defined the width to be four millimeters here and do as we change this we double click one of those referenced values and we just re-reference it by clicking again on the equal sign and in this case we don't want this to be a reference we want to have this four millimeters plus let's say another four so let's take this as eight millimeters so you can see the lower one has now already moved we double click again and we gave it a name like WT2 and double click this one equal sign constraints WT2 so this one is also now 8 millimeters and voila magically everything has changed and it's already complete done and now what we need is we want to make this a little bit transparent appearance transparency close so we can see how it looks inside and finally I need a couple of mounting holes so create a new sketch on the XY plane okay switch to construction line mode we'll do a reference rectangle and we would like to have this rectangle being referenced to our outline sketch so we take away the pocket here and make external reference these two lines are enough and this time I'm showing you a different way of how you could constrain a distance with having four lines all with the same length so you can only move it partially this direction this direction but you can see there's a change in the angle 
and if we limit this angle to a fixed value which is 125 degrees all we can change now is the width or the size of it and if we switch our pocket on again and move it we can find a decent position for our hose and finally constrain one length to let's say in this case take the seven millimeters and then we create holes and the holes obviously have to be real geometry one two three four oh, now we we go a better way we take away two of them and let's fix here let's fix here let's select both of them using the strg or control key as usual in windows or whatever system you have select both and give them a diameter a diameter yes and i make this 2.2 millimeters which on my printer gives me roughly four millimeters of inner diameter remember most of those um, 3d printers with fdm will have problems to create exact small holes so now we have uh, two holes and we close it well we see it looks good it looks uh, that was just the perspective view that made me a little bit worried now and we reverse and we go through all so that's the holes and now we just want to project those holes over to here i'm switching on the origin to make it a bit more easy to understand and we are using the mirrored feature we select pocket 002 we click on mirrored feature and magically it automatically selected this axis or yeah automatically selected the vertical sketch axis and created our mirrors we could use other axes depending on what we construct so that was it now just a couple of final touches as usual please apply them at the end of the whole construction never before because they are very very easy to lose constraining by topo naming problematics and we create a rounding so it looks a bit nicer and well that was it this should work Finally, I need to make a 3D printable object. I click to view, workbench, mesh design, create mesh from shape, having pre-selected the shape logically standard okay and we export the mesh and i call this sleeve holder 
and then open our slicer. Uh, as some of you know, I'm now sticking to use uh, Kiss Slicer, which I find from my point of view is the best and most easy slicer to use. And I'm going to show you how easy this is. First, I need my STL file. And before I start to print it, I have to think about what's going to happen with the inside, what's going to happen with supporting. And I decide this time I will transform the mesh. Unfortunately, it's a little bit not so easy to see. Transform mesh and I want to have the Y axis pointing. No, I want to have the X axis pointing upwards. Unfortunately, it's re reversed now, but that's easy. We just flip upside down and we have that one in a position where it's pretty nice to print. And now how do we cope with the settings that we need to print this thing. Well, usually the most other slicers, they will use predefined settings or you set it every time or whatever. Uh, Kiss Slicer has a very nice feature and that is what we do is we load project G-code settings and I'm going to select a G-code that has been printed before. Switch to G-code files where I say, okay, this is a G-code. I know it works pretty good. It created a nice print yesterday. So why shouldn't it work today? And so we see profile and the name that we opened. And we can just adjust here, I'd say 0, 3 as the maximum layer thickness isn't very good. Dot 3 is good enough. Everything else I can leave as it was before. What I'm going to change is the su support because in this case, as it's a tall object with a very small footprint, it really makes sense to give it a brim so it has more standing foot. And uh, let's say we take a five millimeters brim with the standard height of 0 0.4 and a gap of 1.2 millimeters isn't good. We make no gap because a brim with a gap would only be a skirt. And we want to have this a little bit stiffer. We give it a height of uh, 0 0.6. That would be two, uh, two times printed. Most other slices don't give you the possibility to create a height. Uh, you can even make this a fillet. I'll show you. This is this is nice. I give it one millimeters height and I make this a fillet and I slice the stuff. And we go to models and paths. And when we move this a little bit in 3D space, what you can see is it will be more stiff in the middle, less stiff at the outside. So and we can see it's going to print some sort of support for the holes. And no support in the inside direction, which is good because that's where the other stuff is going to be printed inside. So that is all we need to change 
at the design and we just click on save and I just need to select where that's uh, on the, Octop the Octopies uh, upload folder sleeve holder G code bloop 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 it'll render it and I'm going to switch to my octoprint and load and print so after a while the print has finished and uh, here we can see how it's uh, coming out of the printer by the way I'm using a plain A8 printer. I've got that thing since three years and it works pretty well. This one is printed in PLA and uh, my print bed is a heated print bed using an FR4 um, copper clad material that's a fiberglass epoxy material, the one you use in uh, electronic circuits. And um, as you can see, I'm printing on the epoxy side, and that works uh, very good for my PLA printing. On this picture, we can see it when I took it off from the printer. It's still got the brim here, and here you can see the inlet side. Now, in this picture, you can see what it was meant for. So that's the holder and here I will fit a tube. I'll have two of these with a distance of about 10 centimeters and there's gonna be a plastic tube in here and these arms will be removable so I can select arms with a bigger or with a smaller diameter of the hole and different lengths. And finally here we have the one I just created screwed to the shelf and it's the arm is hanging down and the rear one will be replaced by one that's currently printing. You might hear it in the background and then I can put the spool into and have the spool just above my secondary printer. Okay, so that was it. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you learned one or the other things and uh, look forward to more videos from me. Thanks for watching and if that was a nice video for you, you're invited to buy me a beer. You can see my PayPal address at the description of the video. Bye.